What's up everybody, Scott Goldbaum with Fender Play here. Today, I wanna give you one warm up for you to add to your practice regimen right now. Now check this out. So this is uh, designed for the beginner or the advanced student. I'm gonna give you some options here, but it's a really great exercise that's gonna warm up your fingertips, but also promote some dexterity between the two hands, help you work on finger independence with your fretting hand and a lot more. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Fender Play, I just wanna quickly tell you about it. Now, Fender Play is the complete online learning platform for guitar, bass, and ukulele. And when you sign up, you're gonna get access to over 3,000 lessons that you can take on your own schedule and at your own pace. But for now, let's give you a little preview of some of the stuff we offer in Fender Play with this warm up. So conceptually, it seems really simple at first, uh, but like I said, it's a real complete warm up. So I'm gonna play it for you really fast and you can get a kind of a comprehensive glimpse of what it's all about. Check it out. Now, that may seem like a lot, but at the very beginning, you're gonna see conceptually it's easy. There's some nuance that you can opt into if you wanna work on strengthening your finger independence. Um, otherwise, we can simplify this for you as well. But right off the bat, let's go see what we're doing. We are aligning our fingers and their names, like our first, second, third, and fourth finger with those fret positions. So you've got the first fret with the first finger, second finger at the second fret, third fret with the third finger, and fourth finger at the fourth fret. We're just gonna go ahead and play this freely across the first five strings, all the way to the B string. And I encourage you so that you can work on some spatial awareness and dexterity with your picking hand, that you alternate your picking going down, up, down, up. Now by the time we encounter the high E string at the first fret, this is where we're gonna play a little less freely and with a little bit more emphasis on pivoting our fingers. This is what builds finger independence. Now check it out. You're gonna take your first finger to the first fret per usual, right? Keep that finger there as we then add our middle finger to the second fret. And as a little tip, you wanna fret on the rightmost side of the fret. Then add your ring finger, keeping the other fingers in place. And then add your pinky finger, keeping all fingers in place. So now your fingers are across the first, second, third, and fourth frets all at once. Now as we go back down the way we came, going one, two, three, four, we're gonna keep our fingers in place until they're absolutely needed. So as we pick up our first finger, bringing it to the first fret of the B string, your middle ring and pinky stay where they are. Then you bring up your middle, everything else stays where they are. Take your ring finger, keep the pinky down, and then move the pinky, and everything is across the first, second, third, and fourth fret of the B string this time. So let's copy and paste everything we just did into the G string, starting with the index finger, then the middle finger, then your ring, and then your pinky. Don't get frustrated, this can take a lot of time, okay? And if you prefer to just go freely back down the strings the way you went up the string set, that's perfectly fine too. This is a very specific exercise uh, designed to focus on this one technique of finger independence. Let's bring that to the D string now. Then I bring that down to the A string. First fret, second, third, fourth. If you're doing this right, you'll hear the fourth fret of the previous string ring over into the next string as you go one, two, three, four. Also be mindful of what your thumb's doing. It's probably gonna get a little bit lower, dropping the wrist to help aid you in getting to that, those lower strings on your way back down. Remember to also elevate your guitar. That's really important because it's really helpful. Okay, so we've just done that in first position. Let's go ahead and try that again in second position like this. Nice and freely again. We're not worried about pivot fingers. By the time I get to the high E string, I'm gonna keep each of these fingers down like this. To the B string. Don't worry about playing at this pace yet, I'm just introducing it to you for now. There's an opportunity to bring a metronome to this, but for the time being, just map out 
where we're playing on the fretboard. Now that part of the exercise will be behind us once we've completed it in first and second position. And it's gonna get a little bit more fun now because we're gonna be playing the minor pentatonic scale in three different positions. Now if you're not familiar with the minor pentatonic scale, sounds more like a solo than it does a scale. So it's a really nice thing to warm up with in case you're uh, playing some lead lines or solos. Let's go check it out uh, for the G minor pentatonic scale or the minor pentatonic scale in third position. It looks like this. And just a nice thing to break into after doing these very technical one finger at a time, one fret at a time, a chromatic scale like first and second position warm ups. So, what we're doing here, just two notes per string. I'm going three, six, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six, and then going back down the way I came, alternating my picking all the way through. And I'm still trying to promote this position playing technique. So if I'm moving from the third to the sixth fret, that's my index to my pinky. If at any time on any string, I'm going from my third to my fifth fret, well, that's my index to my ring finger. Let's copy and paste that up a whole step. It's kind of incentivizing to continue doing this over the course of the exercise because uh, the frets get closer together. So as we move up to the fifth position and play the A minor pentatonic scale, it'll look and sound like this. Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five. Seven, five, eight, five, eight. And then you're just gonna take it right back down the way you came. So after having gone five, eight, turn it around right away. And then you're gonna make your way to seventh position. You've done the G minor pentatonic scale in third, the A minor pentatonic scale in fifth, and now the B minor pentatonic scale in seventh position. Let's check it out. You've got index, pinky, index, ring, index, ring, index, ring, index, pinky, index, pinky. Go back down the way you came. And before you know it, you've played all over the fretboard, as low as the first fret of your low E string, and as high as the 10th fret of your high E string. Now, all the while, we're promoting some dexterity between the hands, spatial awareness with your picking hand, finger independence with your fretting hand, and you're just waking up your fingertips. Like I said, you can be a beginner and you can focus on maybe just taking a portion of this exercise as, as a warm up. Uh, you can be more advanced, you can do this exercise in its entirety, and uh, you can really, really hone in on the pivot finger part of this where you're really with the discipline of focusing on finger independence, doing your best to outline it on the way back down the strings. So check out Fender Play. It's the best online platform for guitar, bass, and ukulele, and it's designed to make you a better player today. It's the easiest way to learn any one of these instruments, and you can start out by checking our complete warm-up collection, as well as a vast array of scale courses and drill exercises. Hope you had fun with this, and hope you sign up for Fender Play. We'll see you for more soon.